Hi everyone. Today I wanted to talk about adrenal insufficiency. Um, adrenal insufficiency is something that I suffer with and um, since I've been extremely stressed out the past few days with a lot going on, um, some of the symptoms are kind of hard to control right now. Um, adrenal insufficiency is when your adrenal glands, which sit on top of your kidneys, um, do not produce the type of steroid that you need. Um, there's two different types. Um, one is the type of steroid that you need um, to, say, retain um, fluids in your kidneys, keep the sodium levels up in your blood, um, things like that. And then the second one is um, what helps you get um, you know, get better when you're in a stressful situation or if you're injured or very sick. Um, my adrenal insufficiency is the kind that um, I'm not producing cortisol. So when I get sick or injured, it, it takes a lot for me to get better. So what happened was um, I had flown out to North Carolina um, because my best friend had I had her baby. And that weekend that before I flew, I had my feeding tube changed um, Friday from a long tube to a button. And I went to a concert that night. The next day, I had my cousin's son's first birthday party to go to. And then at midnight, my friend um, says her water broke. So I got online. By 1 o'clock, I had a ticket to go to North Carolina. By 2 o'clock, I was packed. At 5 o'clock, I was at the airport. And by 9 o'clock, I was um, in the hospital sitting with her friends and family and waiting for her to have the baby. So, and while I was in North Carolina, we didn't do much, but it was still pretty, pretty much, um, you know, get up and go you know, and do stuff a little more than I'm used to here since I'm not working, um, since I wasn't working that much at that point. Um, that's also when I did my awareness photo shoot, and we did quite a bit of walking that day, too. Um, so, I flew back home, and unfortunately I couldn't get a, um, direct flight. So, on one of the two flights that I had, I somehow caught a cold, um, and that cold, after about a day or two, triggered a gastroparesis flare-up, and it was a bad one. Um, I was in a lot of pain. I was extremely nauseated and very close to throwing up. I was venting my stomach so that I wouldn't throw up, um, and I was still fighting the cold. That Friday, I had an appointment with my geneticist. That was a doctor, and that was actually the day that I got um, diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, or got the confirmation of the diagnosis. Um, I went there. It was a two, like two hour or two and a half hour appointment, um, talking, you know, going back all the way till like I was like three or four, talking about injuries in my childhood and things that we noticed as we got older stuff like that, and he also did a physical exam, and he told me himself he didn't do the full physical exam because he could tell that I wasn't do feeling too well, um, but when once we were done, we went to the car, and before I could even sit in the passenger seat, um, I looked at my mom and said, I don't feel good. Next thing I know, my mom is calling my name, and you know, touching me on my face and going, Dahlia, wake up. And I looked at her and I said, what happened? And she said, you passed out. I had no memory, like, no realization that I had passed out. Um, for a lot of, usually, um, if I pass out because my blood pressure is too low, I know that I did. But when I woke up, I didn't know what had happened. Um, so we figured it was just because I had just been through the physical exam and maybe it was just a little too hard on my body with me still being sick and still having a flare-up. Um, we went home later that night. I had a second one, um, a second pass out, and my mom wanted to take me to the emergency right then and there. 
And I looked at her and I said, it's 11.30 at night. You know, I don't want to go right now. So she agreed that we would go the next day. But by the time she got home, it was 6.30. And um, the hospital that I go to, um, <laughs> I pretty much know their schedule. And six, the 6 to the, like, I don't know, probably about 10 o'clock window is a really bad time to go. So I convinced her to wait until Saturday morning. We got to the hospital on Saturday morning, and the doctor, pretty much after telling him everything, and I was at that point very weak and shaky, um, he pretty much said that I probably that I would definitely end up being admitted um, to figure out what was going on. Um, I got admitted. I had a really, really great doctor. Um, he was doing everything he could to keep me comfortable. Um, unfortunately, since Zofran is the only anti-nausea medication that I can take, and the current ones that are popular with that is Finnegan and Compazine, um, the backup anti-nausea um, treatment for a very long time for me was IV Ativan. So he was giving me the IV Ativan, the Zofran, um, and medication for pain. Now, whether or not I have medication for pain, IV Ativan does one thing for me. It completely erases my memory. Um, I only remember little bits and pieces um, when I am on Ativan, and usually that memory is sparked by a text message that I sent or something that my dad told me you know, to remind me. Like, I, for, um, like, I don't remember the endocrinologist being called into my office into my room coming and talking to me, um, things like that. But, um, you know, I was still having pain. I was, um, they had my G-tube hooked up to a bag to continuously vent, um, and I was just miserable. Um, it was the first time that I've ever had a doctor look past my gastroparesis without me having to say that. Um, and he was just amazing. He um, he ran a lot of tests, and when he ran my morning cortisol, um, it was almost non-existent. Um, and so he figured out that was the problem. That's when I was actually diagnosed with adrenal insufficiency, um, and it was um, it was decided that. You know, my body had gone into an adrenal crash pretty much since the adrenal insufficiency was not being treated. My body just could not handle everything and crashed on me. Um, their concern, though, was me passing out and not remembering. Um, so as soon as he diagnosed the adrenal insufficiency, the endocrinologists were called in and started me on steroids, oral steroids. Um, but I was still passing out. And so I had to be hooked up to an EEG. I think I was hooked up to it for like two and a half days. Um, I still have hair growing back where the little probes pulled it off. Um, <laughs> but it, um, it showed when I passed out that it was a seizure similar to epilepsy, but it didn't have the same effects of epilepsy. So they diagnosed it as stress seizures triggered by my adrenal crash. Um, once everything had gotten straightened out with my steroids, I actually did stop passing out. Um, so we we knew it was related to the adrenal crash for sure. Um, I went and saw my endocrinologist to follow up, and um, I had already had an medical alert bracelet, but I didn't have um, a lot of information on it, and there's a different reason why, but my endocrinologist asked that if I had gotten a, um, sorry, a medical alert bracelet that says that I have adrenal insufficiency, and I told her no. Um, I have this term here is actually an online um, dot, like system that keeps all the information. 
there's a pin on the back with my username and they can either call or go online and so I told her that, that I had that just because I have so many allergies I can't fit it on a, on a regular tag um, you know my, my surgeries my port um, it's all just too much um, to put on a tag so I got them online one and she said no your medical alert bracelet has to have your adrenal insufficiency on it because if you get into a car accident or any other type of traumatic injury or if you just get really sick at Lake Target and pass out um, and there's nobody around that knows you and they call emergency response. Emergency res the first responders have to know that you have adrenal insufficiency and need to treat you with the I IV steroids right away so that your body can start fighting. Uh, otherwise, you'll be in trouble. So, um, I got a new tag made and it just says my name, my emergency contacts on there and then adrenal insufficiency um, I have it's my first and last name my date of birth but only the month and the year just in case you know you lose a tag it protects your identity identity a little better and then I have my two in case of emergency contacts on there also um, and um, don't ask me why but Emergency responders are trained to look on your left hand for a medical alert bracelet. So, um, if you have one, that's where it should be. Um, I'm sure if they don't find one on the left hand, they'll eventually look at the right. But, um, they are trained to look for, at the left hand first. Um, so, I was very lucky that... I had an amazing doctor who caught what was going on because if adrenal insufficiency is not treated um, and you have a crash like I did, it can lead to um, adrenal crisis. And adrenal crisis is pretty much your entire body giving out on you and you can die from it. Um, so that's a scary aspect to have. Um, but, um, you know, if it's treated right, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, the only problem is being on steroids. It starts to give you, like, chipmunk cheeks, and it, you can get weight gain too. But, you know, it's like weight gain, death, which one do you want more? <laughs> so, um, that's, you know, it's something that if you're having a lot of problems, um, maybe you should, um, look into it. Um, some other signs and symptoms, um, is like hypoglycemia can sometimes be caused by it. Um, weakness, like I told you, I was really weak. Um, like really bad fatigue, um, they call it adrenal fatigue, um, your blood pressure dropping even more than it usually does, so for those people who have dysautonomia and have POTS, that's kind of a hard one, um, but it, could, it would probably make your POTS worse, um, it can cause GI problems, um, since being treated with my adrenal insufficiency, um, rather than taking like I guess 10 ounces in a day I can actually take up to like a cup to a cup and a half of whether it's fluids or food whatever is the choice of the day um, per day so we know that it did make my gastroparesis worse it wasn't the cause of my gastroparesis I still have all my issues and I'm still feeding tube dependent but it definitely did improve it a little bit um, muscle aches, um, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, you know, those are all symptoms. So, you know, if you feel that it's something you should check, you know, don't be afraid to ask your, um, primary doctor, you know, it's an easy blood draw. It's a first thing in the morning, fasting blood draw, 
and it'll tell you yes or no. Um, but that's pretty much it. Just wanted to give you guys, you know, a little detail about it and, you know, show you how quickly things can kind of spiral down if you have adrenal insufficiency. Um, but once it's treated, it's a little bit easier. I've been in a high stress and from, um, a high stress um, time frame the last couple of days and last night I did have I believe one or two um, stress seizures um, so I don't you know it's kind of iffy if I should double my um, steroid at this point or not but um, we're gonna just pretty much see it if I have any today and if I do I'll probably need to double up on my dose for a couple of days until things have settled down. But um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask and um, any suggestions for a video. I will let you guys um, know. Thank you very much.